five, which is modeling with equations and also solving systems of equations. So this is an example of the kind of problem we're going to learn how to solve. We have a father is four times as old as his daughter. In six years, he'll be three times as old as she will be. How old is the daughter now? So we're not going to solve it right now. If we have time at the end, we'll come back and solve it. But um, this is the kind of thing that we're going to learn how to solve today. So there are a couple of common models, that is equations, um, that we'll use repeatedly in our modeling section. One, rate times time equals distance. And two, when you multiply a whole by a percent, you get a part. Okay. Whole times percent equals part. So a few general guidelines when you're working with these modeling problems, that is story problems. Don't rush to write an equation. It is not normal to be able to just read the problem and write an equation down. So don't feel like that's the norm. Okay, so you're going to have to spend some time to understand the problem, identify relevant pieces of information and how they relate, maybe draw a picture or create a table to organize your information. Look for a model, a common one, either the distance equals rate times time or whole times percent equals part, or uh, there might be one given in the problem that you can use. And then another thing you can do is use numbers to test that your equation or your final answer is correct. So we'll work through a few together, then you'll have a, a chance to do some on your own. So a mixture problem, this is like a classic word problem, mixtures. So if you have 300 milliliters of a solution that's 60% acid, and then you have another big jug of a 30% acid solution. So how much of the 30% should you mix with the 60% to create a 50% solution? So first, we want to define our variables. You do this based on the question, right? So how much of a 30% acid solution? Okay, how much 30% acid solution? So that's going to be my variable. We'll call that x. So x will be the amount of 30% solution needed. So once we have a variable defined, that'll help us um, in drawing our diagram, creating a table, and finally writing an equation. So my diagram is, I have 300 milliliters of 60%. So here's my 60% solution, 300 milliliters, right? I'm going to add some 30% solution to it to dilute it a bit right because I want the I want the percentage to come down to 50 percent so I've got um, got a beaker right filled with some 30 percent solution and I'm gonna pour it in here and the question is how much of this needs to go in here so X milliliters right is going in there And after I do the pour, right, I'm going to have more solution, right? This is going to rise. So it's not going to be at 300 anymore, but it's going to be 50% acid. And how much is going to be in here? You got it. 300 plus however much I pour in, which I called X. So you can tell I've had a lot of training as an artist. <clears throat> so from the diagram, we're going to try to pull out relevant pieces of information to fill in this table that's going to help us organize our, our ideas and our work. 
so this is that common model. There's percentages given, so we're going to use the model whole times percent equals part. So the 60% solution, the total amount we have, we know is 300 milliliters. And what percent acid is it? 60. So I'll just put 0.6. And then my 30% solution, the amount is what I defined as x. I don't know how much. That's what they asked me. And it's 30%. And my resulting solution, the total amount, is going to be 300 plus x. 300 milliliters of this plus x of this gives me 300 plus x total. It's going to be 50% acid. That's what, they, that's what the question asked for. Now, this last column is about the amount of acid. So these are solutions, which means they're part acid, part something else, probably water, right? So if this is 300 milliliters total and 60% of it is acid, how many milliliters of acid are in the solution? 180 milliliters. 60% of 300 is 180 milliliters. Now if I have x milliliters of the 30% solution, how could I calculate how much of it is pure acid? Yes, 0.3 times x. Now I only have one box left to fill in for the table that I can put in all the information that I know. The last box is the amount of acid in the resulting solution. I have two ways to calculate it. I could either add the amount of acid from solution 1 to the amount of acid from solution 2, right? So I would have 180 plus 0.3x. Or how else could I calculate the amount of acid in there? Oh, super close. Times 0.5. This is the total amount of solution I have. 50% of it is acid. So if I take 50% of the total, that gives me the amount of acid. So I have two expressions for the exact same value, so I set them equal to each other. So I have 180 plus 0.3x should equal 0.5 times 300 plus x. easy equation to solve. Okay, so I just distribute my 0.5 and I end up with 0.2x equals 30. So x is how much? It's a 0.2. 150. And because I carefully chose my variable to match the question that was asked, once I solve for it, I've answered the question. Right? The question was, how much 30% solution should I add? I need 150 milliliters of it. Um, an investment example. A scholarship fund has $10,000 in it. We can invest in two funds. One's low risk, one's high risk. The low risk fund will return about 4% annually and the high risk fund will get 8% annually. We want to have an expected return of $550 a year. So we just want to make sure we make $550. Um, and we want to put as little money as possible in the high risk fund. So how much should we put in each fund? So step one, define your variables. 
do that based on the question. How much should we invest in each fund? So we'll let X be the amount invested invested in the low risk. Okay. You could do you could just as easily pick high risk, right? We'll let X be the amount invested in low risk. So what does that make the amount invested in high risk? How much is that? 10,000 minus X. The rest of your money will be invested in high risk. Okay, so let's summarize what we know in the table format. So the amount invested at the lower rate, we said that was X. The amount at the higher rate is 10,000 minus X. What's the total amount invested? $10,000. Okay. The percent interest earned on the lower rate, 4%. And on the higher rate, it's 8%. And, ooh, I'm not sure. What percentage do I want? We'll leave it blank for now. Amount of interest. So if I invest X and I make 4%, how do I calculate interest earned? Yeah, 0.04X. Take 4% of whatever you invested, that's how much interest you earn. And then you do the same thing on the higher rate. You take 8% of the amount you invested, which was 10,000 minus X. And how much interest do I want to earn on the total? 550. How else could I, so the 550 was given, right? How else could I calculate the 550 based on this info? Oh, yes. So if I wanted the percentage, I would say this number over this number, right? And it comes out to how much? Let's see, 550 divided by. So five and a half percent, right? Five and a half percent, which is 0 0.055. Okay, so all the information is in the table. So I need to somehow use this to create an equation. I have all the information. I need to create an equation. I need to find out how some of these things are related to each other. What do you think? Yeah, awesome. These two added together should give you your $550. This is the amount of interest you made on investment one. This is the amount of interest you made on investment two. Add them together, we're supposed to make a total of $550. So I set 0.04x plus 0.08 times 10,000 minus x should equal 550. So you might notice this is exactly the same as the acid problem. It's exactly the same setup. It's just instead of acid, we're talking about interest, right? Instead of a solution, you're talking about an investment. So it's, but this is generally the same problem. So this is a pretty um, simple equation to solve. You know, distribute, combine like terms, solve. We won't do it right now. OK, so in this one, we have two cyclists that are 90 miles apart. They're riding towards each other. 
they start at the same time, one is cycling twice as fast as the other, and they meet two hours later. What is the average speed of each cyclist? So we're going to define our variables based on the question. Average speed of each cyclist. So we could let x be the speed of one of the cyclists. Let's just have it be the slower. Okay. Then what's the speed of the faster cyclist? 2x, because they're going fa twice as fast. Okay, so we've defined some variable expressions. Okay, so we have rate times time equals distance is going to be our model here. So instead of whole percent part, we have rate time distance. So my rate of the slower cyclist, we called that x. The faster cyclist, 2x. Ooh, I'm not sure about the whole trip. They're, they're moving at each other, so uh, we'll leave that blank for now. For time, I don't know that either. But what do I know about distance? The whole trip is 90 miles. They're 90 miles apart. Oh, they told you they were riding for two hours. They meet two hours later. So, yeah, they ride for two hours. They both ride for two hours. Right? So, what distance has the slower cyclist traveled? Right. Her rate times her time gives her distance, 2x. And the faster cyclist has traveled 4x, which would be double the distance of the slower cycle, cycler. Okay, so... The whole trip... Rate is kind of weird because it's... They're going at each other, so it's hard to... You can't just add the two rates together, can you? I don't think, I don't know. Maybe we don't even need it. The whole trip is also just, it's still just two hours because they were traveling at each other, so you don't add them together. But the distance, what was the distance of the whole trip? 90 miles. So even without the two boxes that are a little weird in this one, can I write an equation? 2x plus 4x should be 90. The distance that one that the slower traveled plus the distance that the faster traveled, they're going at each other, right? This distance plus this distance makes a total of the 90 miles apart. So 6x equals 90. So x is 15. So the slower cycler was going 15 miles per hour, and the faster was going 30. So sometimes there are pieces of information you don't even need, right? So fill in everything you can. And, and if there's something that's, that's missing or seems like, oh, I don't even know what that means in this context, see if you can write an equation without it. Yeah. 